Good morning. This is the first long run in my marathon training block. So I'm gonna be doing an hour and 40 minutes today. And I'm doing them in a shoe that I picked up at a Dick's Outlet store by me recently, the Brooks Glycerin 21. Uh, Brooks is a brand that I've kind of snobbishly avoided <laughs> since I started running. Uh, they to me just look like, you know, your basic kind of run of the mill shoe. Uh, didn't have any technology that was really exciting me or any shoes that seemed all that exciting uh, but i did pick up the brooks hyperion max and i really did enjoy that shoe and i saw the glycerin 21 at a really good sale price this shoe's normally 160 dollars it was uh, on sale for 90 dollars and i had 20 dollars of credit to dicks so it was 70 dollars so uh this is a really padded max cushion type shoe and I think it's absolutely perfect to take these out uh, for a long run as their first test. minutes into my run passing the Jurassic Park gate <laughs> from my previous long run and uh, this shoe so far is doing exactly what I want from it for a long run I'm slow down to be a less bouncy here uh, it's definitely enough underfoot cushioning uh, for this type of run it's a comfortable upper it's on the, the warm side. It's kind of like a thick knit upper, so this might not be the best for summer running. It's a little bit cooler today though. But overall, it's a decently wide platform, a little bit of bounce from the shoe. It is on the firmer side for kind of a max cushion shoe, but very comfortable. All right, first long run of marathon training done. Uh, so did 11 miles, uh, just over an hour and 40 minutes. Uh, average heart rate, was 142 so right in zone two uh, that run accomplished exactly what it was supposed to do uh, time on feet low heart rate training i uh, feel really good right now these shoes are definitely a long run shoe uh, they have enough cushion for that these though the the foam in them is different from the hyperion max but it does have kind of a similar property where it has a, a firm kind of squishiness to it kind of reminds me of light strike pro a little bit this has less energy return than light strike pro but it has a similar kind of shallow bouncy feel to it so although this does have a max amount of stack it doesn't feel super squishy um it is a pretty wide platform so it's decently stable as well do still have a little bit of over pronation on my right side uh but didn't feel uncomfortable at all on that long run um I don't think this is a shoe that I'd want to turn up the pace in. I'll try that on the next run that I do in these, but uh, very solid, uh, stable, comfortable overall for a long run shoe. So the Brooks Glycerin 21, I actually have four runs in this shoe now. I've got it just past 30 miles. So I have a pretty good understanding of uh, how this one works for me. And uh, I'll kind of summarize some of the stuff that I said earlier and give the final verdict on this shoe. Uh, it's a very built up shoe. They're, they're looking to make this comfortable and cushy. You know, very padded tongue, uh, very padded in the heel collar here, a very firm heel collar as well. This is a sturdy heel collar. Uh, so good lockdown in this shoe. Uh, one complaint about the upper is this mesh is really thick. Like it's really not that breathable at all. And recently it feels like I'm running on the surface of the sun with this freaking humidity that will never go away for weeks. Uh, so I can see these ones being a wet sponge <laughs> the next time I take them out on a run. Uh, so that's one knock on this shoe. It is a very comfortable knit upper, but it's not a very breathable 
breathable upper. So I think these would be better for winter running, but in the summer, not so breathable. These also have a non-gusseted tongue, uh, but the laces do run through it there. I haven't had any issues with tongue slide. These have kind of those a little bit uh, puffy laces, uh, but they're not stretchy, so they do hold the tongue in place. I don't have any trouble with that. Uh, this Brooks uh, DNA Loft 3 nitrogen injected foam here is actually a very firm foam for a max cushion shoe. It's a whole lot of it, but you can see it really doesn't depress all that much. It's a very dense uh, foam. So this actually does work well for me since I am a larger runner. I'm 6'4", 230 pounds. If a shoe gets too soft, sometimes I can compress the foam too much. Just walking around in this shoe, it feels really soft and comfortable, but then when you run in it, it's really not as bouncy as you think it's gonna be uh, based on the way that that foam feels. So step in comfort, just walking around town, this is one of the most comfortable shoes I've ever worn. But then once you get it out on the run, it's really not giving you that much energy return. This shoe has a little bit of bounce, a little bit of roll, it's comfortable, it's wide, it's stable, but it's really not anything phenomenal from like a ride perspective. Uh, you can see here, it does have a very wide uh, forefoot and heel. So it is a very stable shoe in spite of its tall stack. And they give a generous amount of rubber coverage here on the outsole. This is really thick, this rubber on here too. I could see this shoe being like an absolute tank. You know, if you're using this for a daily trainer, putting your daily miles in this, it's gonna be comfortable and stable and it's gonna last a really long time. They are charging a premium price for this shoe at 160. Um, and I really don't think it has the ride that would make it worth that to me. Uh, I was able to get it at that significant discount. I got the shoe for $70. So, I mean, I could probably put 400 miles in this thing for $70. So it's going to be well worth my investment in that respect. Comparing this shoe to the Brooks Hyperion Max is really unfair. Uh, this is really a different type of shoe. Uh, this has a different foam that's even more firm, but it's this shoe is significantly lighter. This is a very light uh, kind of tempo trainer, a little bit less rubber coverage there, but this one has a whole lot of spring and pop and it's really light. Um, and I, the firmer foam in this actually lets me kind of drive off of it and give me more of an explosive toe off where this is kind of like a toned down version of that where it's sinking in more, it's a little bit more cushy, but you're getting a little less responsiveness from the shoe. If you're really looking for a super soft and bouncy experience, I really got to go back to the Nike Invincible Run 1 with this Zoom X midsole. This is so much softer, so much bouncier, so much more explosive. Uh, and then even the New Balance uh, Fresh Foam More series, I think is a more, a softer shoe, a more compliant shoe. Uh, so again, it's like this one's good, but not great. Uh, and you know, buy it weight or second rate, I would say it is definitely a weight. It's not a second rate shoe. It's gonna last hundreds of miles. It's very comfortable, very durable, very stable. Uh, my only weakness is again, uh, the thickness of this upper, I mean, it's gonna be hot to run in uh, during the summer. And it's really not giving you a ride that's all that inspiring. It's not incredibly soft. It's not incredibly bouncy. It's not incredibly propulsive. It's just decent is the best really way to sum up this shoe. I'm actually much more excited about two other shoes that I just got recently uh, that you may have noticed uh, behind me there on the shelf. I have the Super Blast 1 there, and the Super Blast 2 was probably my most anticipated shoe of this year. I've really been waiting for that shoe. I took it out for a run this morning, uh, but I'm not going to do any spoilers in this video because I took some footage this morning, and I'll be doing a video on that one very soon. Um, and I also just picked up the Puma uh, DB8 Elite V3, which this one I just weighed, and this one is also in the 7s. Uh, this one is, I think, 7.8 ounces, which makes this the second lightest shoe I have. Have next to just the A6 Metaspeed Edge Paris. Uh, so this is the second shoe I own that's under eight ounces in a men's 12. So incredibly light shoe in hand. Uh, this one also has the carbon plate. This has their new Elephatic TPU. I wonder who comes up with these names for this foam. So it's not the traditional Piba. It's a very, very soft, compressive foam. Uh, it's supposed to have great energy return, and then we have that carbon plate in there. So I haven't taken these out for a run yet, but I'm really looking forward to giving these a shot soon. That's all I have for today. Please remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon with the uh, two new super shoes.